TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. <laughs> um, if we do go live and you happen to miss it, this is where all the highlights will be up here in this video. Uh, don't forget, we do got the Patreon. This is where everything that I can't watch on YouTube we watch it over here on Patreon. Don't forget, it's almost the first of the month. So make sure y'all got that money to be with you. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I be dropping dope content over here, though, man. It's crazy. Uh, don't forget, we do got the uh, Discord as well, man, where you can pitch up requests. This has been up here for a minute. In the, um, up here and things of that nature. This is 10 most dangerous gangs in Europe. Okay, talk to me. Talk to me. Y'all know I'm from gangland capital, Chicago. Well, you know, L.A. And, and Chicago, same thing. But different politics, but, you know, gang, gang, gang. I don't condone that, YouTube. I'm just saying that's the layout. The old continent is one of the most favorite places for criminals and their activities. And it has some very powerful mafias and gangs. Especially after the creation of the EU and the opening of international borders between EU member states, organized crime began to flourish. The UK is not a part of the EU no more, though. Which is being a lot real hectic. It's causing a lot of problems. From 2007, when Romania and Bulgaria joined the EU, organized crime in Europe reached its peak. They celebrate it. <laughs> My bad. Well, not only the countries of the European Union, also other European countries have mafias and very dangerous gangs, such as Russian, Albanian, Serbian, etc. Now, in 2022, we're talking about the second largest market in the world, just after the US. In today's video, we present you the 10 most powerful and dangerous gangs in Europe. Number 10, Galician Clans. Never even heard of them. Never even heard of them. That don't mean they're not powerful and they don't exist, but I just, I'm in America. Wouldn't know. Traditionally, the region of Galicia made its Bang. money from the fishing industry, to which the coastal geography of the region lent itself. Following the crippling of the fishing industry, local fishermen began smuggling tobacco to keep their business alive. The success of these tobacco smuggling activities led to the creation of clan-based groups who made their entire living off smuggling. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Anything with the word clan in it, it makes me question stuff. You're like, wow, y'all could have chose any other name but clan. It's like, ah. Nowadays, no the Galician clans use their Colombian and Moroccan contacts, traffic cocaine and hashish, aside from illegal tobacco, into the Spanish mainland. While the Galician smuggling business in the beginning was very local, the internationalization of the organized criminal activities have led to crime-related clan feuds, where murder, kidnapping, and torture is occasionally committed by criminal Galician clan members or Colombian contacts and contract killers. That's one thing, man. When I go to Europe, I'm going to be minding my business. <laughs> I don't want no problem with none of y'all. Y'all be, yeah, y'all take it too far. Like, dang. Number nine, the 36 boys, Germany. Germany. It is estimated that there are over 3 million Turks in Germany. After racist violence increasing dramatically during the economic crisis in the 1980s, many of those attacks were against the Turkish community, which led teenagers of Turkish immigrants to form gangs in order to protect themselves. Active from the late 19. That's how a lot of gangs are formed in Chicago, just to protect themselves against, you know, you know, the community, other communities, the people that were set out to protect the communities, you know. In the 80s to the mid-1990s, the 36 boys were a group of primarily Turkish immigrants from the Berlin-Kreuzberg borough of Germany. At the height of its power, the gang is said to have had between 300 to 400 members. The 36 boys took its moniker from the former Berlin Postal Code, 
Zudos 36. The gang fought turf for Berlin 300 to 4 postal co My bad. It looked like one big project. Let's play. Zudos 36. The gang fought turf Zudos. wars with Nazis, skinheads, and the warriors. Okay. Number 8. Serbian gangs in Scandinavia. Serbian gang. The Serbian gang in Scandinavia, also known as Yugo Mafia, is an organized crime group in Sweden and Denmark. The foundation in Sweden and Denmark, did Anir have anything to do with them? ...of the gang began during the mass immigration of Yugoslav guest workers to Sweden in the 1970s. Its power base is in the cities of Stockholm and Copenhagen. The Danish government labeled the Serb Mafia as having a leading role in smuggling heroin into Denmark, surpassing the Albanians and Turks in the Copenhagen drug market. Besides heroin, the Serb Mafia is active in trafficking large quantities of cocaine and marijuana through Sweden and Denmark. Number 7. The Br British Yardies. Thumbnail. British Yardies. A yardie is a slang term originally given to residents of government yards. I heard in the UK there's a, a, a yardie man walking around with one arm. One arm yardie. What's his name? Oh, my phone not even here. I forgot his name. But did, let me know if y'all know who I'm talking about. One arm yardie. Y'all be like, you know what the, the, the story is. If you see him, you know to run. I forgot his name. Hard housing projects in Trenchtown, a neighborhood in West Kingston, Jamaica. When many in the Caribbean community came to England to work in the 1950s, the phrase was used to describe immigrants of lower financial status. However, the term was eventually applied to gang violence that occurred in London's black community. Yardy was that top boy? Culture consists primarily of gun crime and drug trafficking, especially marijuana and cocaine. The gang has no real structure. Yeah, that's top boy. What do you blow it, Clark? <laughs> or central leadership. Number six, Roma gangs. The Roma, sometimes referred to as gypsies, have been part of the Eastern European landscape for centuries. However, as more Eastern European countries have joined the EU, cities like Paris, London, and Dublin are having a... So are they, what this video is trying to tell me is the, e, the EU opened the, <laughs> the EU let the gangs in the door. Is that what I'm hearing? A hard time with the large influx of Roma many of whom don't have jobs and are living in large tent camps on the outskirts of town. Roma were accused of committing more than 1,000 crimes across France, Belgium, and Germany. Number 5. The French Connection Marseille, France Marseille has long been dubbed the Chicago of the South. Okay. All right. I need everybody to calm down. Take a chill pill. Let me be the judge of this. Marseille has long been dubbed the Chicago of the South and the heroin city. It has a that's, a, that's a that's a solid start to being dubbed Chicago of the South. If that's your nickname. A murderous history of organized crime and violent gangs, the most legendary being the French Connection. But today, Marseille is no longer the heroin processing capital of the world. The city is at the center of the cannabis trade and a key point in the cocaine smuggling route from South America. Mm. Ongoing gang problems have made it impossible for the Mediterranean city to shed its violent image. This is more lucrative drugs, but like, you know what? Never mind. Number four, <laughs> the Helbanians. The Helbanians, my Helbanian. Are you ready to jumpstart your beard growth today? Then you have to check out our Beard Roller Kit. First of all, sir. It, it pretty much turns your face into a chia pet. <laughs> Bro, mustache was elite. <laughs> My bad. The shameless Albanians are thought There's to- There's a heavy Albanian community in Chicago once again. I know a lot of Albanians. To rule the East London cocaine trade with an iron fist. Albanians are behind increasing gang violence as they vie to leapfrog their rivals in a bloodthirsty turf war. The gang's Instagram page boasts that their gang motto is... Wait, they got an Instagram page? 
We are God of the Streets. Number three, Sonsevskaya. If I follow, you think they'll follow me back? Ebratva, Russia. So, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Solentesvaskia, Bratva, Russia. The Bratva began operating out of the Sontsevo district of Moscow in the 1980s. Over the years, Sontsevskaya Bratva has been linked to criminal mastermind Semyon Mogilevich, as well as esteemed thief Jemal Kachitze, which enhanced its reputation amongst established criminals throughout Europe. Sergei Mikhailov, the founder of Sontsevskaya Bratva, changed tactics in the 90s and moved the gang into the banking sector. This move not only allowed the Bratva to launder their money, but got closer to he was moving real smart. powerful Russian oligarchs. Today, Sontsevskaya This how they tattoos look? Bratva is involved in nearly every aspect of the Russian underworld, including racketeering, money laundering, prostitution, credit card fraud, arms dealing, human trafficking, and hacking. Number two, the Pink Panthers. Panthers. What they vice lords? What's that? The Pink Panthers are the largest, most successful gang of diamond thieves in the world. Credit Diamond Thief Gang. Okay, that makes sense. Pink Panther was kind of smooth, wasn't he? Credited with 370 heists worth over $500 million. The gang is composed of networks of teams, many of whom are ex Yugoslavs with military training who fought in the Bosnian Wars. The loose group of thieves is known to combine expert planning and military discipline, but it is their daring heists that set them apart from other thieves which earned them the nickname the Pink Panthers. The Pink Panthers are responsible for heists in 35 countries, with specialists in everything from alarms to safe cracking to stealing cars. They will well planned, gang. They got somebody for everything. Number one, the Camorra, Italy. The Camorra, Italy. The Camorra is a crime syndicate that originated in the Campania region of Italy in the 18th century. This is beautiful. Indicate that originated in the Campania region of Italy. This is, look at the pool down here. Look at. In the 18th century. Unlike the Sicilian Mafia, the Camorra doesn't have centralized leadership. The organization is said to have. Isn't Rondo or somebody allegedly with him? Have somewhere around 111 different clans. And each clan, like a gang, works independently of each other. The organization's influence extends to Lombardy, Piedmont, Tuscany, and Emilia-Romagna, and over the years, the group has also gained a foothold in the United Kingdom and the U.S. The Camorra is the most influential and violent faction of the Italian clans. That was all for this video. Hey, keep in mind, when I visit, I mind my business, man. You know what I'm saying? TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to go to Finley from Chicago to the UK and all around the world. Apparently, I'm gone.